Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through on how to recover your data from the Synology C2 backup service. So I originally was planning on all the content in this video to also go with the setup guide for Synology C2. However, as I was editing that video, it was getting very long and was very dense with information. So I decided to go ahead and split the video up into two parts. The previous video, which I've already published, focuses on the actually setting up and getting your data on the Synology C2 servers. And this video is gonna focus on just if you need to recover files, for instance, if a file gets overwritten and you need to recover an older version, or if a worst case scenario happens where your Synology is completely dead and you have to recover all your data off of the C2 backup service. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. So to restore files, you have two different methods. You can use the built-in backup explorer, but you also have the ability to uh, click on this link, which will lead you to the web portal for the Synology C2 backup service. With the C2 backup service, this is handy if your Synology has completely crashed or is otherwise not usable, and you need to back up a file to possibly finish an important project or some something along those lines, you can restore or download a select file from the C2 website. However, this does have a pretty big limitation in the fact that you can't download an entire folder. So if you have a large number of files you need to download, this will take a very long time. And you can't also restore files directly from, or restore files directly to your Synology from the web console. So the backup app that is built into your Synology device is definitely gonna be the recommended route to restore files. But if you do need to download a quick file uh, from a backup, then the C2 web portal is a usable method. It is just gonna be inefficient if you need to restore and download a large number of files. So to launch the Backup Explorer, simply click on the icon and it will start to load all your file information as well as the version information for those files. If you do have a password on your C2 backup, it'll first prompt you for that password and it will remember that password for the entire duration of your session. So I've already been prompted and entered my password, so that's why I didn't have to do it when I clicked on the icon the second time. I do wanna take a second though to make sure to stress that you have this password recorded someplace safe and secure because if you you do end up losing it you will not be able to access that encrypted backup and restore those files and if you need to restore files from offsite backup it's very likely that not having your password is going to be a very annoying uh, event so just make sure you have that password recorders in place both safe and secure so now you can see i can see my backup uh point it is going to record when the backup actually first started not when it finished which is a slight annoyance, especially for this first iteration that took a very long time to upload because I first paused it, but it also took like a full 18 hours to upload on top of the fact that it was paused for about two days. So I can navigate through my files and this is the exact same file structure that I have if I go to my file explorer and go through my shared folder. So you can see here that the, with the exception of the recycle bin not showing up, these are the, is the exact same architecture. So this F1 standard is actually an open RC design for 3D printed, a 3D printed RC car. You can see here that I can click on this folder and restore that entire folder. Just keep in mind though, if you restore an entire folder, it will completely overwrite this, this folder and everything within it. So if I had updated these 3D models or 3D assemblies, then it would overwrite that point in data. You can't download an entire folder, which would be nice if, for example, you're working on a 3D assembly, for example, this whole RC car, and you changed a couple parts, and you wanted to download that assembly at that point in time, but also still have your current version. You can't simply download an entire folder. If you wanted to do so, you'd have to actually download each file individually. A possible workaround for a case like this is to simply rename your actual live version of the file that's on your Synology to something along the lines as like F1 standard, um, then you know current, and then you can go through here and restore this version, and it will no longer overwrite the folder because there's nothing that actually matches that exact file name. So you still have the current version, but you'd also have the previous version of that 3D assembly. 
So there are use cases where you'd want to download a folder rather than restoring a folder, and sadly you can't do that. But there's a quick workaround that I discovered um, for doing by doing what I wanted to do. So from the Backup Explorer, you can restore entire folders. You can't restore a shared folder. So if you click on the shared folder, you see that the icons blink out, but you can go to the, shared the root shared folder and restore individual main folders. In addition, you can uh, restore a group of folder or a group of folders at the same time. So you can just go through here and select everything within the root folder and restore that all in one fell swoop. Uh, that's useful, especially if you got hit by like a ransomware or something that ended up encrypting all your data, uh, and you'd be able to restore all that very quickly. All right, as I mentioned before, you can also go to the Synology C2 web portal by clicking on this link uh, to restore, or rather to download individual files. So once you click on that link, it'll bring you to the dashboard where you can easily see how much storage you've used versus your total allotment. You can also see the percent of your used storage that each backup is using. So you can actually utilize your C2 storage for multiple different Synology backups. Uh, so you can see which backups are using what percentage of your used storage. So you can also go through here to manage your subscription. So if you decide you want to upgrade your plan or downgrade it, since I'm using already using 316 gigabytes, I pretty much can't downgrade to the 300 gigabyte option. But if I needed more storage in the future or wanted hourly backups, I could utilize the plan two option to um, get more storage. So from where there though, what we want to do is restore data from our backup. So to do so, you can find your backup task, click on this backup explorer icon, it's the same icon that you're used to over on your Synology, and it'll be greeted by a very, very familiar interface. If you do have a password on your backup, it'll ask you for that password, and then enter that password, and then you'll be able to proceed. After entering your password, you'll see the exact same backup information and folder hierarchy you saw earlier with on the local version of the backup explorer the major difference here is you no longer have the buttons to restore or download files and in fact if you hover over a folder you know, don't have, even have the icon to download a file if you do want to download a certain file you have to go on a file by file basis so like i was saying earlier this isn't something you want to do to restore a large number of files, but if your Synology has crashed and you need to finish an important project, you can go through that route, and hopefully the number of files that you need to quickly download uh, so that you can utilize them is a small number and you don't have to restore dozens or more files utilizing this method because it will be a rather slow and tedious process. But it is nice to have that ability if your Synology has completely died for some reason or another. All right, so that should cover pretty much everything revolving around restoring your data from the Synology C2 backup service. If I did miss anything though, don't hesitate to leave a comment in, in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer that to the best of my ability. However, if you did find this video helpful or otherwise interesting, please give it a big like. I do greatly appreciate that. And also consider sharing this with anyone that you think it might help or benefit in some form or another. Also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, make sure to smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, Zach out.